This is The Speaking Show. I'm David Newman, and you're tuned in to the number one podcast for speakers, consultants, and experts who want to speak more profitably. All right, I am here with the awesome and amazingly super smart Josh Green from the Mather Group. How are you, my friend? I am great. It is good to talk to you. And we're talking about the magic wizardry behind search engine optimization or SEO. I think this is like the dark arts. People have no idea how this works. Maybe they've paid some other consultant thousands and thousands of dollars. Maybe it worked. Maybe it didn't. And they're just sitting there going, when people are looking for me on Google, how do I make sure they find me? Let's start by maybe even talking about what happens if you do nothing. Because people say, oh, write your content, write your website for people, not for search engines, and better mousetrap, people will beat a path to your door through Google. True or false? Probably false. You know, the interesting thing is a lot of times when I talk to people about SEO, it's a conversation that's often about debunking myths and, and generally saying, hey, you're probably fine. Here's how SEO works. Let me tell you. And um, I know your audience has a lot of public figures, speakers, authors, and I can offer some tips for them because it's oftentimes, I think, a common myth that, hey, good content. Google will give you great rankings. The traffic will flow in. We'll all be rich and famous. And that, that should take care of things. And sadly, it doesn't necessarily work that way. But, uh, you know, one of the things I think is interesting and hopefully we can touch on is, is the, I think there's a myth around content. And then two is what should you as, as a member of the Do It Marketing Tribe keep in mind as you're thinking about SEO? Um, I'll tell you the one common craziness that I hear, and maybe you hear it too. Well, Josh, when I put my name or my company name in Google, I come right up. I'm number one. What's wrong with that thinking? Well, you know, it's actually interesting thinking because for a lot of people, that's SEO, right? If I've just launched a business, probably the only thing I'll rank for is Josh Green Consulting. So that is SEO in that you want to make sure when someone searches on your name, the results are good and that they sort of tell the story. Maybe I used to be an auto mechanic, but now I'm an SEO person. I want the most current incarnation of me to come up. I want it to announce that I have a book on auto shop marketing, whatever it might be. So there is an SEO element to that. And for a lot of businesses, that's probably the thing they should be worried about the most is I want to work with you, Josh. What's going to come up when I Google you? Because that can either help seal the deal or have people move along. So for a lot of businesses, especially small businesses, that is a key element. The challenge is when people assume that that's SEO and they're done. It is sort of what is your reputation online? It's important, but that is only the people who know about you. So that doesn't do you any good in terms of demand generation beyond confirming for people that you, you know, exist. Exactly, exactly right. So most of the time, if you want to be found, people have no idea what your name is yeah. or what your company name is or what your brand is. They're looking to solve a problem. So I think there's maybe two kinds of SEO that we can talk about. One is when they're looking for a generic label, mm -hmm. right? So leadership speaker, mm -hmm. uh, technology speaker, SEO expert, SEO keynote speaker. That's one. But I think the vast majority of Google searches are about questions, mm -hmm. right? How do I get my website to the top of Google? How do I lead a, a new team of millennials? How do I sell into a market that is very oversaturated? Talk about those two kinds of SEO, like when people are searching for a label mm -hmm. and when they're searching for a question. So if they're searching for a label, you have two options. One is sort of the traditional, what we call SEO. Hey, am I going to show up when someone searches on it? The answer in most cases, if it's a two-word label, is no. 
even if you have the world's greatest content on leadership training, you're way behind. You're not going to show up for it. You can also buy pay-per-click terms and get some guaranteed traffic. Google will charge you maybe 10 bucks a click and you could spend a thousand bucks and sort of see if I get a hundred visitors to my site, is that useful for me? Does it pay off? So there's also the pay-per-click option. I think the disservice that happens for people is they hear create great content. They spend hours and hours and days creating some great content on leadership training. And it's not just going to generate traffic by itself. You might be able to write something about a very niche thing, like an eight or nine word keyword, but there won't be very much traffic to it. So there are a lot of trade-offs there. And then the second one is sort of the question one. And it's a similar sort of thing. You have a slightly higher chance of ranking in a vacuum if you're answering these questions. But the secret to SEO is that it's not just the content. It's also about what is essentially the popularity. Are people linking to the content? Are they essentially voting for it in Google's algorithm? So if you just create content, you're probably not going to rank for very many things. The trick is you need people linking to it and Google counts those as votes. And that can be very tricky. All of a sudden, you're far afield from what your expertise is. You're trying to track down links. It can be done. But for most people who are running small businesses, most of their business is going to come from outbound marketing, referrals, conversations. And what you want to do is make sure you tell a good story when people find you. But you're probably not getting a ton of cold traffic on leadership training where people are like, oh, how can I find someone who does leadership training? I'll try the internet. That happens, but you probably are getting people who are doing very specific niches, uh, leadership training for auto mechanics, leadership training for mortgage brokers in Texas. There's much more of an opportunity on the niche side of things, but it's not a free ride because you need people to read it and essentially vote for it by linking to you as the other half of Google's algorithm. And that takes time unless something just goes viral and a ton of people find it and link to it. So I've got like 17 questions, but I can only ask one question at a time. I understand that. I know. I was going to ask you about the connection between SEO and conversion. Mm -hmm. Like We don't just take people to the homepage. I then was going to ask you about the connection between SEO and the pay-per-click that you just described. But I really want to start with the most important thing that I think you want people to take away from here, which is SEO is about building a reputation. And like you said, the votes, Mm -hmm. which are the links. So link building, I know that there's old school link building. There's black hat, white hat, gray hat, link building. There used to be these link farms and Google shut those down and took away all Google juice and took away all credibility. Then there's the slow, handcrafted, hey, I'm going to be on a podcast. Will you link back to my website? Hey, I wrote an article. I guest blogged. I'm in this, you know, legitimate directory, not a directory scraper. I'm quoted in Forbes or Fortune or Inc. Magazine. So those are all individually handcrafted links. Are there ways to do a little bit of link building at scale or are there some legitimate directory type strategies where we can simply be listed, not by a spammer or a scraper, but how do we get this going if we've never thought about link building and get some momentum without having to wait five years? Yeah. And what's funny for a lot of people in in your world is an SEO strategy can look an awful lot like a press strategy. So if you've, let's say, come out with a book and are going on a tour for it, that will organically generate links. People will be posting about it. There'll be links to maybe the bookstores you're speaking about. You may be in some trade publications. Maybe a local paper picks it up. All of that stuff will be good for SEO, even if you're not consciously doing anything about it. And that's a lot more doable, I think, 
then getting into the nuances of SEO and sort of, you know, the, the link building, all the different options, the outreach, because that's, you know, that can be another full-time job. It's a, a rabbit hole you can go down. That's probably not, you know, the highest and best use of your time. But if you're sort of getting out there and, and doing business development, spreading your message, doing press, all of the things that you would just want to do to grow your business will have a beneficial impact on your SEO and your ranking. So for most people, that's a solid starting point. Like, what are you doing to get awareness of your message out there? And then that does a nice job of also boosting your SEO and you're being found online. I love that strategy. The link building strategy is really a PR or a media strategy with some intention behind it. Hey, this interview is a real moneymaker. If you're serious about ramping up your reach and revenue as a speaker, trainer, or expert, book a confidential speaker strategy call with our team. The link is doitmarketing.com slash call. It will be the most valuable 45 minutes you invest in your speaking-driven business. Speaking of value, let's get back to the show. I also think that when people, you mentioned about launching a new book, I found that when I'm in book launch mode, and I take on all these extra quote unquote jobs, or I, I have a team now that right. you know, does the jobs. All the things that I'm doing to promote the book are all the same things that I should always be doing to promote the business. What I'm hearing you say is all the things that you're doing to help with your SEO, they're not extra work. And you should certainly give this to an expert. You should not try and figure this out yourself because the rules change daily. But the things you should be doing for SEO to build your SEO are the same things you should be doing daily to build your business. Yeah. To do marketing and sales and outreach and connection building and relationship building with the types of things that will bring you business and bring you inbound leads. I know that back in the day, Google also used to look at outbound links. Like how many links are we linking out to to other authority sites? Is that still happening or is that passe? I think it's minuscule. At this point, it's more, if you want to link outbound to someone, do it. If you don't, don't do it. There's a tiny little a bit of Google juice that's passed back and forth. My experience has been the people who obsess the most over it are the least affected by it. I have a friend of mine who's a, a cat lady. She runs one of the most popular blogs in the world about keeping your, your cat at home. So nice spend so much time worrying about if she puts a link to someone, will Google like come to her house and knock down the door? And I would guess that she has probably the lowest chance of anyone I know of being affected by this. So, you know, in general, if you want to link, great. If you don't, great. It's probably not going to affect much of anything. Let's talk about SEO and conversion. I know you do a lot of fantastic work getting people to rank for Google, getting people to, you know, the relevant terms, the relevant connections, some of the inbound link strategies. The first thing most people want to do is when they work with you, say, Josh, just take them to the homepage. Take yeah. them to the homepage. Take them to the front door. I want them to see everything. I want to see all our products, all our services. I want to see all of our online store. Is that the smartest use of an SEO opportunity, someone, you've done all this great work, right? you've engineered it so they find you, they connect with you, and you take them to the homepage. What's a better strategy than that? Or does that work for some people? I would imagine if you have a really, really dialed in analytics platform, you could do some specific evaluation of that. To the extent that you can, and this is sort of a good general rule of life, take people to what they're expecting to see. So if they're finding you because you're selling widgets, take them to the page about widgets, not the page about the factory that makes the widgets and 700 other things. With organic search, you don't always control as directly as you do in pay-per-click what page someone is going to. but in general, the more you can get people to go where they're expecting to go or where they're going to have a high propensity to take an action, 
then do it. If someone's seeing you as a speaker, take them to a page about your speaking. It'll be congruent. It'll line up. They'll continue on. If you take them to a page about your origin story without any mention of the speaking, it's going to be a little jarring. And the last thing you want when everything in the world is one click away is to be jarring. You want them to go, oh, that was an interesting link on a speaker. Here's the story on the speaker. Here's a video on the speaker. Here's an email to get more information. You want it all to flow. And and a lot of times you can measure that if you're using Google Analytics, you can see the bounce rates from your SEO traffic. My experience has always been the homepage has the highest bounce rate, which sort of makes sense. It's the front door. Not everyone likes the look of the store. So yeah, to the extent that you can do it in any of the online marketing tactics, stay with what brought someone there. I want to also maybe back up to a macro level question that this brings up. So let's say people hire you for an SEO project. Mm -hmm. You get the lay of the land. You sort of see where they're at. You look at their analytics. You install some cool stuff to help them monitor and measure and see what's really going on in the background. If we were to zoom out to 30,000 feet, I think when you say search engine optimization, if you ask five different clients, hey, what would you like the outcome? Mm -hmm. of your search engine optimization campaign to be. One will tell you awareness. One Mm -hmm. will tell you leads. One will tell you sales. One will tell you brand building or being preeminent in my marketplace. When you say, okay, here's some things that SEO can do. And here's some other things that you think SEO can do that. You're crazy. So please don't expect, you know, when you have like a, a sausage machine, when you're expecting hamburgers to come out, you will be disappointed. So in your estimation across all the clients that you've helped with this, what is a reasonable outcome and a sensible expectation that once they work with someone like you, they've got an SEO strategy, they're starting to see some results, they're getting more traffic onto their website. What's the purpose of a solid SEO campaign or what are two or three legitimate purposes where they know that, okay, I'm trying to get this outcome. Yes, working with Josh, working on my SEO will typically get me that outcome. So yeah, starting at 30,000 feet, I would say, you know, 50% of the conversations I have tend to result in a, you don't really need an SEO strategy. Like you have goals and they have other tactics that probably can get you there and SEO is not going to do what you want to do. Sort of moving down to 25,000 feet, the first thing you always want to do with SEO is make sure you're showing up on those searches for your name, Josh Green, David Newman, in a way that's congruent with who you are, that it's not filled with you know one-star reviews or hate mail or, or anything like that. And then the third level is sort of what can an SEO engagement do. And usually you want to start out by trying to A, define goals. So I would like to have 50 phone calls a month come in asking me about what I do. I would like anyone who searches for auto mechanic speaker to find me in the top three results. I would like to, for every $100 I spend on this area, get one book sale or 10 book sales. A lot of this is defining your goals and knowing your metrics or using some sort of campaign to figure out what your metrics are. For a lot of us, we have a value we might place on a new email, a new strategy session, a new client. The more that information is clarified in your head, and I think a lot of us might have gotten into this because we love the content. And maybe if you've gotten into it because you have a message, but maybe weren't thinking about the business, you need to know those numbers because it's very tough, like you said, to have a conversation to say, I want to have good things happen. Okay, that's $3,000 a month for good things. How are we going to measure that at the end of the month, right? I can tell you, all right, I feel better. But if you start a campaign or even just analyze where you're at now, that can be really helpful in figuring out how this should work is you've got to treat this as another 
element of your business that needs to have some goals and some metrics behind it. Otherwise, it gets very fluffy. Even with preeminence, you know, defining rankings or defining traffic that comes from that will help you because otherwise, you know, it's tough to know if you're getting anywhere. And the problem with SEO or the challenge is it's a slow build. It takes time to get your message out there, to get links out there versus just buying traffic. It's got rewards if you're ranking in the top three for some of these terms. That can be huge, but you got to know what you're trying to do, just like anything. And I know, you know, there are a million different tools for goal setting in general for business. This is something where you've got to have a goal. Otherwise, I think there are a lot of services out there that will just spend some money, buy you some links in whatever fashion, and then you're sort of left going, "Mm," you know, so have an idea what you're trying to do, I think is just crucial. And then also find a partner. All of those things that you mentioned are very achievable. You want to be preeminent. You want to be generating new strategy sessions, all of that sort of stuff. You can do it, but the more you can define it, the easier it is to get where you want to go. Josh, I love that, that you absolutely have to have outcomes. You can't have squishy goals because squishy goals lead to squishy campaign that might be disappointing at the end end result. Super quick commercial break. Isn't this interview amazing? If you'd like to get more ideas on how to start or grow your speaking business fast, pop over to our free training at doitmarketing.com slash webinar. You mentioned something a moment ago which I think some people may be, that may be their primary reason for doing an SEO campaign, which is reputation management. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some old blog posts. Maybe there's some old complaint websites. Maybe there's some, you know, nasty rumors or a competitor, you know, posted some horrible things about you. Whether it's legitimate or not, people will come to you and say, Josh, there's some stuff out there that whether it's true or not, I need to push that down to page three and four and five of Google. When people Google our company, they Google our name, they Google our service. You know, first thing that comes up is this horrible slander, you know, nasty ass blog post. Can we do that with SEO? And are there some ways over time to mitigate the damage of just some bad reputational links out there? I think that an understanding of SEO can be very helpful in that. And there are a lot of interesting resources and articles you can find. But if you think about the typical Google page, you've usually got your name, the company name. If you have LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, most companies are going to have, or most people are going to have two out of the three. Those are usually things that can get pushed up in the rankings if you build some links to those pages. So that's, I think, one general opportunity. The second opportunity, I would say, is working on that platform itself to see if you can fix things. Sometimes if it's like a glass door or a a Yelp or something, there are mechanisms where you can contest a review. A lot of times you can flag something if it's egregious and not fact-based because a lot of times companies just don't follow up and just sort of assume the internet is fixed. And I think it's a a useful thing to keep in mind that a lot of these pages are run by humans and there are things that humans are often willing to do, especially if it's not fact-based, because then that gets into trickier areas for them to navigate. And then third is there are oftentimes other positive stories that can get pushed up if people are talking about them could be a Wikipedia article, could be a local paper, things like that. And then the fourth and final one is, if you think of Google as a store, thinking about ways you can take up more shelf space. So if it's just on your brand, if you run a pay-per-click ad about your company, Google will give you a ton of space to put your message out there and that'll push things down. So if nothing else, you're telling your, your message another time on that page with like six different lines of text. So that will take some information down and give you an opportunity to tell your story again. So I think the more that you tell your story on that front page as well, you'll push down the bad stuff and you'll get your message out. Let me go back to what you said a moment ago, not only with the pay-per-click 
take up some screen real estate. What have you seen as the connection? Let's say someone's already doing some pay-per-click and then they bring you in to do the search engine optimization. Is that a one plus one equals three? Is there some connection between how much pay-per-click we're doing on Google or YouTube and our organic results? Or how do you see that connection? My experience has been, unfortunately, it's more of a one plus one equals two. Google has done a pretty good job of keeping pay-per-click and organic fairly separate. There's definitely some information you can get from a paid campaign that will inform your, your SEO, what keywords are people most likely to go on, what keywords are sort of the money keywords where people are willing to convert, and that can inform your, your SEO. So there's some good data that you can take back and forth. But Google, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, doesn't give priority to advertisers or mess with the organic results if you're spending money with them. So that can be good or bad, depending on which side of the equation you're on. But yeah, definitely from a data standpoint, it can be useful. If you find out that you know a competitive keyword is bringing in business, that's probably one you might want to advertise on to get more share of the impressions and traffic that's out there. Totally amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm gonna have two final questions for you. The final, final question is gonna be, how do people get connected and stay connected to all of your great resources and all things search engine optimization? Before we get to that question though, my second to last question is, if folks listening in were to take one central idea about SEO away from our conversation today, what would you hope that would be? I would hope they they took away that a lot of the things that you need to do for SEO, you will be doing anyway as part of building your business. And if you do those things, the SEO will come. And many of the things that have made their way into popular culture for SEO are not the best ways to go about it. You don't need to stuff keywords in. You don't need to churn out a blog every four hours. If you build your business, a lot of times the SEO will follow. I love that. And you have to do both those things. You have to build your business and build your SEO strategy with intention, with focus, with the outcomes in mind like you talked about. Yes. Very, very important. Well, how do people get more information? about what you do, how you can help, some resources, some links we can send people to. And we're going to put those in the show notes as well. When people are listening to this episode, pop over to thespeakingshow.com and we're going to link up all of Josh's resources and links that he's about to share. And David, thank you for having me on today. It's uh, always fun to chat. So if you're interested in more information, you can go to www.themathergroupllc.com and sign up for our newsletter. Our webinars are listed, both upcoming and recorded that you can have access to. And just drop me a note there and I'm always happy to chat SEO. Awesome. Josh Green, you the man, and you are the most findable SEO guy on the planet. Is that correct? Let's hope so. Well, you're the the most findable SEO guy on the speaking show. I'll tell you that. Well, thank you. I'm honored to, uh, to claim that position. Well, that wraps up another episode of the speaking show. Hey, tell you what, if you like us, rate us and review us on iTunes, subscribe, tell a friend, go grab the notes and downloads and extras at thespeakingshow.com. See you next time. 